Uh, this is the Wall Street crash revision. So we are going to be looking at the Wall Street crash. We're going to look at what the causes of the Wall Street crash were. Also, what the consequences of the Wall Street crash were. Basically, this is a time when Americans went from the economic boom and they had loads of money. Okay, and they just thought that was going to carry on, going on forever. But when we get to after 1929, they find that actually a lot of their bank accounts are completely empty. Firstly, we need to know how does the stock market actually work. So if you buy a stock, that might also be called buying a share. It means exactly the same thing. That is a share of a company. So you could buy a share today in Tesco's or McDonald's. In those days, they might have bought a share in Ford Motor Company. So what happens is someone buys their share in Ford. There's a car that symbolizes Ford. Very good. And they hope that that company does well. Now the company uses that money, there's some money, to invest in things like new factories, new buildings, or more workers. So they would hopefully make more profit. Now, when the company makes more profit, the value of the shares that you have bought will go up. However, if the company does badly, the value will go down and we'll represent that with a smiley face here and a dollar sign where it goes up but a sad face here oh dear and the dollar sign that goes down so the first main section of this revision guide is the causes of the Wall Street crash but firstly just a reminder of why they actually do call it the Wall Street crash well it's simply this Wall Street is just the place where the shares are bought and sold okay and obviously they are the things that crashed the prices of the shares crashed that makes it the Wall Street crash now in your revision guide you've got a way to remember the cause of the Wall Street crash that is eco bust because the US economy went bust it's quite straightforward so we're going to go through what each of those mean now so firstly the E Okay, stands for economic weakness. And what economic weakness means is simply that the big industries in America did not react, industries did not react to demand becoming lower. So when people were buying less cars or fridges or toasters, the companies did not react properly, they did not have a proper strategy and so they carried on to lose money. The second one is C, so that stands for confidence. Now that one's quite straightforward. Confidence is essentially where once companies started to lose money, okay, people started to try to sell their shares. People started to sell shares and this eventually leads to a panic. Again, the old sad face man is back, okay. Uh, he's having a panic because he wants to sell his shares because he's lost confidence in how well the US economy is going to do. The final one for this section is O, okay, and I'm going to put that up here. That's overproduction. Now that's a really nice one. I can't fit it on the page. There you go. Overproduction. It's a really nice one if you get that in an exam because it simply means that companies are producing too much. So they have to put their prices down, they have to put their wages down as a result, and people lose their jobs, which all causes share prices to go down. Because what we've got to remember is, each one of these problems links to Wall Street, because each one of these problems means people lose confidence in American companies and try to sell their shares, which causes the price of shares to crash. So after the first three for eco, we then need the second four causes which spells bust. So the first one is that businesses failed. All right, now this links into um, the causes that we've just seen on the other piece of paper. So once confidence goes down and once economic weakness sort of creeps in, businesses begin to fail and this again leads people to sell their shares because their money is going down, their wages are going down, 
businesses are beginning to fail and it all just combines uh, to cause problems in the American economy. The next one is an unequal distribution of wealth. Now a simpler way to put that is essentially the rich stay rich and obviously the poor stay very poor or if you're posh, poor. Now the problem with that is Henry Ford makes all these cars, I'll draw you a nice Henry Ford car again, there you are, you can have that in any colour you want as long as it's black. Now he makes his cars, he churns them out, the rich people all buy one, the problem is they don't buy another one the next year and once they've sold a car or a fridge or a toaster or a radio to all the people who can afford it they then look round and realise that actually nobody else in America can afford to buy one because the poor people have stayed very poor so actually these factories are no longer selling and again it causes profits to go down, it causes wages to go down, it causes jobs to go down and it causes in the end share prices to go down. The next one is speculation. Now again, speculation I think is a really nice one if you get that on your exam. What speculation means, the definition of it is buying and selling shares, which many people in America were doing, but for a short term profit. So you could walk into your bank with $10 and the bank would give you $90 to go and spend on shares. The problem is, if the value of those shares goes down when you come to try and sell them, you still owe the bank $90. So if that happens to a lot of people because businesses are failing, because there's an unequal distribution of wealth, profits are staying down, then lots of people realize they owe the bank money and they all try to sell their shares very quickly. The problem is that causes, once again, prices of shares to crash. So speculation just causes the whole system to be very unstable because everyone's trying to buy and sell for a quick profit. And once people start panicking, the whole system starts to collapse. The last one is tariffs. Okay, that's T, tariffs. Now this one's quite interesting because effectively a cause of the economic boom becomes a cause of the Wall Street crash. So this means that foreign countries, such as European countries like Britain, countries, oh nearly, countries, put taxes on US goods. Now they do that because Americans put taxes on foreign goods to try and make people buy American. Now that works through the 1920s, but towards the end of the 1920s, because of an unequal distribution of wealth, because of speculation causing problems, because businesses are failing, American companies realize they need to sell their products elsewhere. The most sensible thing to do would be to try and sell that in foreign countries, but they realize that American products are too expensive in foreign countries because of tariffs. So again, that means American companies lose money, lose profits, they have to put wages down and in the end that causes their share price to go down and links directly into the Wall Street crash. One way you might like to think about all these causes of the Wall Street crash linking together is this cycle of depression. So what happens is due to all the problems we've just talked about companies start to go bankrupt, they start to lose money and they start to not sell as much which means that they do not need as many people to work in their factories. So people lose their jobs, but what that then means is that those people have less money in their pockets to spend. So now they are buying even less American products from American factories, which means that more companies go bankrupt, so more people lose their jobs, they have less money to spend, and that's why the Wall Street crash quickly goes from a problem for some companies to a panic in the entire American economy. Now that we've done the uh, causes of the Wall Street crash, we need to look at the consequences or the effects of the Wall Street crash. Now the first group that I would like to talk about is farmers. Okay, Farmers were quite negatively affected by the Wall Street crash. Unfortunately for farmers, they were also quite negatively affected in the economic boom, so they've not done very well. In the Wall Street crash, 
there are two main problems. The first one is that they cannot afford their mortgages and so basically they end up homeless because the bank comes along and repossesses their farm because they've lost the money, they can't make any profit, they've got nowhere to live. Just to make that even worse, you also have the dust bowl going on at the same time, which is when farm, uh, land has been over farmed and weather conditions um, are not helping it, it's very dry and farmers can't grow anything. So even those who've still got their farm quickly run into financial problems. Now, more directly linked to the Wall Street crash is a wider problem of despair. Now, what this means is, firstly, there are many people who cannot even afford to feed themselves. So you have soup kitchens in many American cities. On top of that, there are 23,000 people, 23,000 people who commit suicide in 1932 which is when the depression really begins to take hold that's much larger number than the sort of average for this time on top of that many people become homeless because a little bit like the farmers people who live in houses also if they lose their job can't afford to pay the mortgage so the bank takes their house now what they can either do is they end up living life as a hobo so they might travel around with no permanent place to live or they might live in a shanty town with their family where they build um, a sort of shack to live in out of whatever they can find. Now they called these places Hoovervilles because many American people blamed President Hoover for not helping with uh, the Wall Street crash. Because of this there were many outbreaks of violence. Now that took several forms. In the most simple um, effects of this was when sometimes farmers would band together and would refuse to let the banks come and take their farms and they would fight them off with pitchforks. In a more serious example of that was the Bonus Army, which we'll come to in a minute, but this was a group of former US Army soldiers who'd fought bravely in the First World War. Many of them had got medals, like this one. Here's a medal. Okay. Now, the problem there was they came to ask for their pension early because they'd got, many of them were homeless, they'd got no money. They came to ask for the war pension early, but President Hoover turned the current army against the former soldiers um, and drove away 20,000 of them from the White House lawn. There were also protest marches and riots in many major American cities, which shows as we'll come to in a second, that people did not feel that President Hoover and the American government had done enough to help them with the very severe consequences of the Wall Street crash. Uh, while we are talking about consequences of the Wall Street crash, there are just a few other interesting statistics that you might like to revise that you can definitely bring into any answer about this in an exam or especially useful as FMOK from my own knowledge when you're doing a, a source question. So, firstly, in 1931, there were 238 Americans admitted to hospital because they were starving. Now, that does not mean starving like year 11 might be before dinner time. That means they are literally dying because they've had nothing to eat in a civilized country in 1931. And that's because they couldn't afford food after the Wall Street crash. Between 1929 and 32, 5,000 banks failed. Now that means that many ordinary Americans who had actually not even taken part in buying stocks or shares lost their life savings. And that included one of the biggest banks in the country, the Bank of America, actually failed. And unlike in 2008, the government did not bail out these banks. So people just lost all the money that they had saved for their entire life. The next uh, statistic you might want to know is that in 1932, 250,000 Americans, Americans lost their homes. 250,000, that's a quarter of a million. So when we're talking about banks repossessing people's houses because they, um, they had not enough 
money to pay the mortgage. It's not just a few, it is a quarter of a million Americans, okay? Now the last one is wages. This is a really interesting statistic. I've been through this with a couple of my classes, wages. Wages went down by 60% um, between the actual Wall Street crash in 1929 and 1932. Which means that in today's money, if you were earning 20,000 pounds, a relatively reasonable job, if your wage went down 60%, you'd be earning 8,000 pounds. So you can see how people who are living quite comfortably with a job that provided for them and their family, even if they were in the lucky few to still have a job after the Wall Street crash, their wages on average had fell by 60%, which means that some people's wages had fell by even more than that.